Hello guys, it's your favorite medical YouTube channel here, Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. And so as usual, my name is Dr. Kofi. I am a medical practitioner who has the passion of teaching everything medicine. And we are still on the tutorial series. In today's video, we will have a tutorial in obstetrics and gynecology. And so if you are new here preparing for any licensure exam, you might want to consider subscribing and turning on your notification because this is just for you. All right, let's get straight to this. And so quickly, our clinical case. And so we have a 14 year old virgin who was brought to your gynae clinic complaining of menstrual pains which started from menarche. The pain is very severe in the first two days and the rest of the days it subsides. She had her menses four months prior to presentation. There was no finding on rectal examination. The first question says, what is your diagnosis? And give the types. And so let's spend some seconds thinking through this question. Good. And so as you know, the first thing to do is to identify the relevant information in this clinical stem. And so for the relevant information, we have a 14-year-old virgin who presents with menstrual pain and more importantly, this menstrual pain started from menarche. And then another relevant information is the characteristics of the pain, the description of the pain. So the fact that it is very severe in the first two days and for the rest of the menstrual period, it subsides. And then the fact that he had her menses four months prior to presentation. Now, this particular part of the question or this particular statement is not really clear. So, it has various meanings. Is it that she had her menses four months prior to presentation and since then she has not had her menses or they mean to say the first time she had her menses was four months prior to presentation. In other words, the menarche started four months ago. Either ways, I'm pretty sure this part of the question is not very clear, but it doesn't affect our answering anyway. And then the fact that there is no finding on rectal exam is also a very significant or relevant information. Now for this question, I will explain the relevance of this key information identified on the next slide. But this 14 year old who came with menstrual pains obviously has dysmenorrhea. And so the diagnosis is dysmenorrhea. And there are two types. It's either primary or secondary. And so it is enough to think that the diagnosis is dysmenorrhea and the two types are primary and secondary dysmenorrhea. Actually, dysmenorrhea on its own is a symptom, not a diagnosis. But we kept the diagnosis as dysmenorrhea because the question, sorry, because of the question that followed, that we should give the types. But actually, this lady actually has primary dysmenorrhea. So primary dysmenorrhea is a diagnosis. But it's okay to keep the diagnosis as dysmenorrhea and the types are primary and then secondary. And so now to the explanation of the relevant information. The question was clear that we are dealing with a 14-year-old virgin who came with menstrual pains. And by definition, menstrual pain is dysmenorrhea. And whenever a patient presents with dysmenorrhea, the next thing is to determine if it's primary or secondary dysmenorrhea. Now, one distinguishing feature between primary and secondary dysmenorrhea is the age at which the dysmenorrhea started. Primary dysmenorrhea typically begins a few months to years after menarche, and that is in adolescence. And so it is very clear that this patient is likely to have primary dysmenorrhea. However, secondary dysmenorrhea starts in adulthood. 
Now, the nature of the pain described fits primary dysmenorrhea. Usually, the pain begins a few hours before menses, but sometimes about two to three days before the onset of the menses and peaks on the first day of menses and then gradually it subsides. And then we come to the controversial statement. We are, we are told, sorry, that she had her menses four months prior to presentation. Now, this statement can mean that the first time she had her menses was four months prior to presentation, or the last time she had her menses before coming is four months prior to presentation. But I want to believe that they mean she had her menses, her first menses, four months prior to presentation because she was still having the pain that is why she came to the clinic and so i want to believe that is what the question is saying and then you are probably wondering why rectal examination was done right and reported right now it was done to rule out rectal endometriosis endometriosis is the presence of endometrial tissue in certain parts of the body other than the endometrium and so if you have endometrial tissue in the rectum you have rectal endometriosis and then that is what the question was ruling out now endometriosis is the most common cause of secondary dysmenorrhea we have prepared a very important or a very comprehensive lecture on endo sorry on dysmenorrhea and i think you should have a look at it that is the link up there on the right upper part of the screen but the link to that video is also available in the video description below very good please do not forget to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not done that yet now the second question says which type or which specific type is the patient having and explain why and I think we've mentioned this in our previous slide, that the patient has the primary type of dysmenorrhea. So the patient has a primary dysmenorrhea. And then the reason is that the pain of menstruation began a few months after menarche, and that is adolescence. And that is typical for primary dysmenorrhea. And then also the pain pattern described in the question, the fact that it peaks on the first one to two days of the menstrual period and subsides is also typical for primary dysmenorrhea. And so the two reasons are because of the age on, of onset, sorry, and then the pattern of the pain. Although the pattern of the pain is not really specific for primary dysmenorrhea, it can also occur in secondary dysmenorrhea as well. So the main reason is the age of onset. Now the third question says, what investigation will you request and what will you be expecting? Now, although the question says that the lady is a virgin, we still need to rule out pregnancy for a fact. One of the preliminary investigations for any lady who walks in with this menorrhea is to rule out a possible ectopic pregnancy and so we have to do a pregnancy test to rule out pregnancy and so the pregnancy test we can use the urine or the serum typically the urine is commonly used and so you can do a urine pregnancy test and then if it is negative and there is still a strong suspicion of pregnancy you can do the serum beta ecg test but this one we are expecting it to be negative why are we expecting it to be negative because the question has told us that the girl is a virgin and so the fact that she's a virgin rules out pregnancy but we still need to confirm with the pregnancy test and then the last question says what two classes of medications will you give to the patient now if you watch our comprehensive video on this menorrhea you will learn that the main mediator of primary dysmenorrhea, which this patient has, is an excess of a chemical called prostaglandin F2-alpha. And so, by blocking the synthesis of this chemical, we can control dysmenorrhea. 
And so one of the drugs we give is NSAIDs. NSAIDs block the synthesis of prostaglandin F2 alpha. And so one class is NSAID. Then the next class of drug is oral contraceptive. The reasoning here is that the pain is caused or the pain occurs during menstruation. And so if you are able to stop menstruation from occurring, then she won't have the pain. And so we can give oral contraceptives. In fact, this class may be the first line or may be suitable for patients with this menorrhea who at the same time do not want to give birth or do not want to get pregnant like this 14 year old and so the classes are NSAIDs and then oral contraceptives and so thank you once again for watching kindly remember to like and share this video very important let us know your thoughts your comments in the comment section and kindly subscribe to the channel if you have not done that yet Thank you for watching once again and then see you in our next tutorial. Bye!